Hi, this is Jeff Coronado on behalf of JCSE, and this is a session in Bridging the Gap. So Bridging the Gap is a series of structural engineering design tutorials that we have here in our office uh, that's intended to assist young engineers and by extension, uh, engineers who are maybe in their junior year or senior years of, of uh, school. Um, because as we, I think we all know, structural engineering is very competitive to get into and, and relatively speaking, there are a very few positions for the number of civil engineering graduates that come out of school. So if you're looking to get a head start on your career, you're looking to get a head start on what kind of industry will expect you to know. Uh, these are great tutorials for you. If you're also in your first few years of practice where you're still feeling overwhelmed and with everything that industry expects you to know, by all means, these tutorials are also intended for you. Uh, so hopefully these, these will be helpful uh, for, for you. Um, so in, in particular, what we're dealing with here is uh, detailing a mechanical platform on a rooftop. So it's a question that came in from a young engineer and they're, they're creating a platform for a rooftop mechanical equipment, uh, which is sometimes abbre abbreviated MEP, right? Uh, either MEP um, or HVAC. Um, MEP stands for mechanical electrical uh, plumbing. Okay, so sometimes you'll see that abbreviation or that acronym, I'm sorry, that acronym, or sometimes you'll see the acronym of HVAC, uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So either way, it's a platform that we place on a rooftop to be able to support that kind of equipment. And so the, the engineer here is kind of looking for some guidance on that. So absolutely, uh, let's jump in um, and see what we can, what we can help with. Um, Okay, so this is something similar to what we would do here in the office. Uh, and this is a, a platform um, that we would do, that we would use uh, for what we would call a lightly loaded platform. So we're not gonna put a monster unit on this. We're not gonna put a unit that would have a high aspect ratio, meaning, um, let me undo that, meaning something that has a, a relatively kind of a smaller footprint in comparison to its height, but kind of for your typical smaller packages, couple couple ton package, um, this would be the platform that we would use. So it's kind of a standard platform. So let's kind of uh, delve into this one. Let me blow this up a little bit. Let me zoom in here. So I think the first thing that we would want to notice here is the um, the surface that we create for the unit to sit on. So that unit is uh, going to be sitting probably something like this. Actually, you know what? I'll even uh, let me do something a little differently. Unit probably be sitting something like this because units in all likelihood have their own uh, sheet metal curb. And so the sheet metal curb of the unit is what sits on our platform, on the platform done um, uh, on the platform. Uh, let me see if I can. So, so there'll be, you know what? I don't want to do that. Um, let me just draw it like this. So you'll have this sh these sheet metal legs that will sit here. So don't confuse the sheet metal legs, the metal curb uh, that is part of the um, part of the package of the mechanical unit. Okay, so all of this is part of the package. Don't confuse that with our platform. Like you wouldn't want these legs to sit directly on the roof sheathing for several reasons, which we'll kind of get into now, okay? So these legs, this curb, that's part of the sheet metal curb, is part of the mechanical unit. Um, that we're not gonna get into in this tutorial. We wanna pick up kind of the construction starting from this point, uh, or give them the construction, if you will, up to this point, and then let the mechanical contractor come in with the unit itself and those and that sheet metal curb and attach to the platform that has already been built for them. 
Okay, so let me clear the screen and let's focus now on this surface. So this surface, um, what we typically do is provide three quarter inch wood structural panel. You might say, well, gosh, that's a little bit heavy, right? And typically aren't roofs uh, half inch thick uh, wood structural panel and, and you'd be right about that. So the three quarters of an inch, you already can tell is we're doing a little bit, uh, something a little bit differently. And that is, um, it serves a couple of reasons. One is because even though we have this platform and you see kind of this gap here, right? And we'll get to this in a minute, but remember, um, remember that um, there are ducts that sometimes can go through this platform, right? Because again, that unit, that unit that sits, let me get another color here, that unit that sits here on top of the platform will have ducts that will pierce through, um, let me get back to yellow here, that will pierce through this platform, right? So, um, so the reality is that this has been cut out to allow those ducts to, to go down. Um, so that's one reason you, you want to have kind of a stiffening element, if you will, something that's stiffer here that then will kind of bridge the load around this, uh, this duct. And remember, this is three dimensional, right? So you have to think about kind of this, this, um, how this actually looks like and not just on a two, two dimensional, um, kind of a two dimensional view of this. Um, so that's one reason why we would want the three quarter inch thick uh, sheathing there. It's, it's kind of to distribute loads. It also helps to serve to, um, to um, oh my goodness, to dampen, to dampen vibration, right? Remember these units are kind of, I mean, they're oscillating, right? They've got components, mechanical components in there. So they might be vibrating a little bit, they're, they're, they're oscillating. So all of that, you kind of want to dampen a little bit or as much as we can, right? So that those vibrations don't end up going through the platform into the structure and even below to the structure uh, into the habitable space below uh, where people then are going to be feeling them, okay? So that's one thing. Let me clear this out. So that's... Um, this sheathing here. Okay, then we've got the next thing that we've got is this element here on which the sheathing sits on. Um, those are going to be typically two buys, and you probably want to have those be two by sixes at least, um, at least starting off with two by sixes. Because one thing to keep in mind, these two by sixes need to be shaped. Okay, remember here in this rendition, this surface, this surface here is real level, right? But the reality is a roof is anything but level, right? It should be anything but level. If it is level, we've got a problem, right? Then we got a drainage problem. So the reality is that the roof, even a flat roof, has all kinds of uh, warping, all kinds of uh, slopes in it intended to drain water. So the reality is that if you look at the roof in plan, if you look at the roof in plan, in a plan view, and then you think about your mechanical unit on top of it, on top of the roof, right? The reality is that this point here, this corner is at a different elevation than this corner, at a different elevation than this corner, and at a different elevation in this corner, right? All four corners are at a different elevation because the roof might be sloping down in this direction, might be sloping down in this direction. It's usually sloping down kind of in two directions, right? Because ultimately it needs to, the water needs to find its way to a drain somewhere. Um, so roof surfaces are, are um, anything but level and yet, and yet we need the mechanical unit needs to be sitting on a perfectly level surface. So the way we achieve that is with using these two by sixes, these two by sixes here 
that we're using and that we're bridging, where we're bridging then uh, the gap between the roof sheathing and the sheathing that we've laid out for the mechanical unit, we're bridging that with two by sixes that then we shape. Okay, so they're gonna be shaped, meaning they will be cut. So they'll, if I exaggerate, if I exaggerate, they might look something like this. Um, and, and subsequently, each one will be each two by six, because we're gonna lay these two by sixes probably at 16 on center. It could be that we'll make them at 24 on center. That's your choice. Um, but whatever that spacing is, um, each one is going to be slightly, slightly tapered to continue to accommodate the, the actual roof slope. Okay, so at the end, though, we want a horizontal surface for the sheathing that supports the, um, the air handler. We don't want this to be probably anything less than a two by four. So even if we start, so that's why we start off with a two by six, because at the end, we don't want, um, we don't want this dimension here to be anything less than four inches. So in essence, like a two by four, right? But we don't want it to be less than four inches for a couple of reasons. One, again, as we've alluded to is vibration, right? Um, this reduces the vibration. Um, this helps dampen the vibration. The other thing that I want you to see, and I'm going to now clear the screen here. The other thing that I want you to, sorry, the other thing that I want you to see, let me clear the screen, is that um, this, keep in mind that this air handler is um, putting loading on this platform, right? So we have this, this pressure on the platform. We want this member here, we want this member, this two by six that has been shaped to kind of help to distribute that load. So we want this to have a fair amount of stiffness. If this was infinitesimally small, let's say, you know, let, let's say this was only whatever, um, about half an inch. Let's assume a worst case scenario that we that we placed this on on plywood. Okay, so this is no more than this big. Okay, then we come in with a large load here at the corner. This load is going to go where? It's going to go into this guy, maybe, and this guy down here of the roof framing, right? But the reality is that any, and, and keep in mind, this is a conceptual sketch, right? The reality is there's probably going to be more roof joists in here, um, right? Because this is going to be bigger than just a couple of joists. So there's going to be some more roof joists in here. But regardless, the idea is we want to distribute this load so that even these guys, um, even these guys back here also dis see the load, also see the load, and they participate in the load resistance. Um, so if we have this member here being too flimsy, that's not going to happen. That's why, let me clear the screen, that's why we want this element here to be at least um, a, a net four inches, more closer to two, to a two by six, so that then this remains real rigid, this remains real rigid right here, and then equally pushes down on, uh, on, on the supporting framing here pushes down on this guy, pushes down on this rafter, pushes down on this rafter, and pushes down on this rafter. Well, that, it'll push down on those outside rafters through this blocking, right? But so that's a couple of reasons why you want to see this to be, to be a two by six. Probably I can even throw in a third reason, and that is roofing, probably a roofer, um, which is the beauty of construction. Like you can ask different people, uh, different trades, what what the purpose is of something, and they'll have a different answer for you. 
If you ask a roofer, why is this platform here? What they would tell you is that it's for roofing purposes because then otherwise they need that vertical surface to make this transition. If this transition is anything smaller, if this was only a couple of inches, let's say, they would have a real hard time roofing that. So we give them that vertical dimension so that they can roof, uh, provide their transition uh, between the roofing up here, let me go over here, the roofing down here, the roofing up here, and then they can provide a transition in the roofing from here to here to here. So they need that vertical edge. Um, so another reason why we need to put this platform there. Okay, let me clear the screen and see what else do we have here. Okay, um, now I said these are two buys, right? These are made out of two buys and likely two by sixes. That's something that you as the engineer, you need to decide uh, whether those are gonna be two by sixes. Again, I, I would say, I would recommend you go with two by sixes at the very minimum. Um, potentially could be two by eight, just kind of depends on how much load there is there and how much of a slope the roof has that you're trying to, to bridge. Um, but at each end of these, I would make those four buys. And here's the reason why. Let me see if I can draw this in plan for you. Let's take a look at this platform. So if we were to look down at the platform, right, get a bird's eye view of the platform, uh, what we would have, then let's say is something like this. Okay, now I'm going to draw for you in, in a stick fashion, um, the members that create that platform. So we're saying there's going to be a two by across here. And then let's say we're laying these out every 16 inches, right? So we're going to have two buys going across here creating the platform. And then finally one at the end. And you can see my sketch is not too, too equally spaced, but you get the idea. Okay, here's another suggestion for you. I would, looking at this member and looking at this member, those end members, I would specify four buys. So instead of a two by, have a four by at each end. And you'd say, well, gosh, why do we need a four by at each end? Well, the reason why you want that to be a four by is because you want to give that mechanical contractor something a little bit more substantive so that when they come in and they set, let me see if I can draw for you in, in Siam here, maybe what the outside shape of the mechanical unit would be, including the curb, okay? So they're gonna come in here and put the mechanical unit up to the edge. So it's gonna look something like this. Then they're going to want to probably drill some kind of lag bolt here and here um, to anchor this down to the platform, right? To the platform that we've just given them. So that's gonna be what, maybe a five eighths inch lag, a three quarter inch diameter lag, something that's gonna be pretty substantive. And if you drill that into a two by, eh, might not go over too well. So I just assume give them a four by at each end that then they can really drill into. Um, okay, let me clear the screen. Um, what else do we have here? You'll notice, um, well, before I get to that, um, so we're clear that this here is a two by, right? We've kind of seen that now. These are two by sixes that are shaped, probably spaced 16 inches apart. Um, so by conventional construction, by conventional construction, let me see if I can change colors here to stay. By conventional construction, the framer is gonna toenail, is gonna toenail the two by that's for the platform into the framing below. All right. 
So they're going to be doing this. And if this isn't clear to you, uh, let me draw this out in plan view. So here, it, here is the two buys from the platform. Okay, I'm going to draw a couple of adjacent two buys on the platform. And then in red, I'm going to draw the, the, let's say the two buys or whatever the roof framing is. All right. So the roof framing is doing this. Are you with me, guys? The roof framing is doing this. So these guys here are these guys here, right? This is the roof framing. This is this guy, this guy, you know, all of these guys, right? All of these guys. That's what I'm showing you here in red. So what we were talking about, the toenails, um, those toenails are, are nailing down in here from the, from the two by, from the platform into the two by, that's the roof framing. Here and here, there's a toenail, there's a toenail. This is plan view, right? Toenail here, toenail here, toenail here, toenail here, toenail here, 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 and here. That's this guy, all right? So those toenails give you a lot of lateral resistance in this direction, all right? Looking at the section, it gives you lateral resistance in that direction. So if you try to come and push this platform the way I've shown you with this blue arrow, those toenails are all going to be activated. Those toenails are all taking load into the sheathing and basically into the diaphragm assembly. So in this direction, let me see, on the plan view, that would correspond to what? Uh, this direction, same direction. Right. So if we try to push the platform from left to right, all of those toenails would be activated. However, however, if you try to push the platform in this direction, up and down on the screen, those toenails would not activate. They don't have resistance. They don't have tabulated resistance in this direction. Okay. So in the direction going in and out of the page, if we represent that with a force that's going into the page, those toenails would not be active. So that's why then we need these clips. So we add these clips, um, four of them total, so that there's, if, if now, let me see if I can do this. If I represent that platform um, let's say like this, okay, so the platform that supports the, the air handler is like this, um, what we are saying, ew, I got myself into a bind here, that's okay, uh, what we are saying here is um, that we would want to see a clip at each side of the platform that would serve to transfer the force that in this case, it's a horizontal force that's going up and down on the screen into the sheathing. Now here, it doesn't look like it's catching any framing. And yes, you're right, it doesn't catch framing. That's why we have this block here to catch to catch those 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 clips okay so it does it does catch framing um but that's the idea all right so let with that let me clear the screen and see what else do we have yeah and then we get into these blocks so yes um since in all likelihood the edge of the platform is not going to land flush over um, one of the roof uh, framing elements, right? It's probably going to fall somewhere in between, and that's fine. That's probably a preferred preferred for us. Um, that way, we can set a block. We can set a block, and it could be flat. It could be vertical. That'll depend on your load. It'll depend on whether you have uplift or not. So you kind of have to check your uplift. Basically, this detail is intended 
for a situation where there's no uplift. So you'll have to check your center of mass on your air handler uh, to see if there's uplift or not, right? To see if the dead load of the, of the mechanical unit is sufficient to resist the uplift. So if, if we look at an elevation of your unit and it's like this, and so you've got a force acting your, through your center of mass like this, it could be that the dead load is gonna exceed um, is going to exceed whatever your overturning is here, right? Your, your force, um, your horizontal force on the unit um, and the horizontal force on the unit, that's, that's a matter of another tutorial, right? Knowing how to calculate the horizontal force on the, on the air handler for whatever horizontal loading you might be, uh, might, uh, might be acting on the unit um, whether you're in a seismic region, a wind region, uh, whatever that horizontal force is, um, you have to determine that. And that's based on another tutorial. Again, let me know, by the way, um, if you have any questions on anything that I've said here, by all means, leave us a note at the end of the tutorial and, and we'll try to get to it. Um, um, so yeah, or, or if there are any similar questions to this, it could be that we, other, we have other tutorials that cover um, similar, uh, a similar concept to this, but not covered in this particular tutorial. Again, let us know and we'll try to point you in the right direction. Okay, so depending on whether you have uh, uplift or not, um, that might dictate on what the blocking is here that you will need. Uh, let me see if I can clear the screen. Um, platform surface, we've covered that. Let me see what, uh, if anything here, four by at each end, we've covered that. Okay, yeah. So I think we've kind of covered conceptually what this detail looks like. If you, if this was helpful to you, sure appreciate if you give us a thumbs up. Uh, any comments or suggestions or questions, by all means, leave them uh, at the end of the tutorial. If this was helpful to you, I uh, sure encourage you to subscribe to our channel, our YouTube channel here at JCSC LLC. And uh, that way you can be notified or I think you have to toggle something there or something, I'm not real good at that. You have to set something on your YouTube uh, once you do subscribe to our channel, but then you'll be automatically alerted um, of any new tutorials as we put them up, okay? So hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, and that's it guys, no good, thanks.